Hello, today I'm going to be talking about a tracheostomy tube. First of all, this is a tracheostomy tube. It is used for a number of different reasons. The primary reason is to create an artificial airway. This is the exterior of the tracheostomy tube. This is the interior of the tracheostomy tube. So this will catch air, bring it down into your lungs on inhalation and on exhalation. It'll catch air, bring it out, throughout from your lungs into the environment. This will change your pattern of breathing a little bit because normally you just in through your nose, down to your lungs and out from your lungs, up your nose and mouth. Now with this, this is going to change the breathing pattern. And this is extremely useful for many people for many different conditions. However, it will affect your ability to speak. One thing to note, when you have a tracheostomy um, procedure, when you have the procedure to get a tracheostomy, you are going to have your vocal cords right here and they should not be damaged. So your vocal cords are up here, tracheotomy, tracheostomy tube is down here, and you can see it should not affect your ability to speak, but this will because it's pulling a lot of air in and out of your lungs and it's inhibiting your ability to speak, which your ability to speak is contingent upon forcing air from your lungs up through your vocal cords and out your nose and mouth. And if you can't do that, then you can't speak. So you can see how a tracheostomy tube will change the pattern of breathing. But just to show you this, let me rip out my tracheostomy tube and speak with without my tracheostomy tube. I'm going to put my hand over my throat. So it's just like I'm I'm speaking just like a regular person, and then I'm going to take it off and let you see how I, I speak just with the tracheostomy, just with the hole in my neck. And then I'm going to put the tracheostomy tube, not this one, a new one, into my airway. I'm going to do a tracheostomy tube exchange and then demonstrate how just the tracheostomy tube affects breathing. So that is the plan. And this is very exciting because I have never taken out my tracheostomy tube, covered my airway, and tried to speak like, oh, just like a regular person without a hole in the neck. So this is the first time ever on film. I know we should do some sort of grand celebration, but not now because we need to get on with the video. So I'm gonna cut the video right here. I need to tie my hair back and rip out my tracheostomy tube. So I will be right back without my tracheostomy tube. Oh, okay, this is how I speak without a ventilator or my tracheostomy tube. <clears throat> and it is very difficult because it's very hard to talk. It makes me very tired when I don't have my ventilator, but this is how a person normally talks. La 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 la. Now let's pretend like you got a tracheotomy. See a tracheotomy? Oh, isn't that gorgeous? I know. So this is how you talk when without the tracheostomy tube with just the hole in your neck. Here we go. Hello, how are you? I'm doing okay. If you can tell, it's easier to breathe with a hole in my neck, but it's still kind of difficult to understand me because air is going in and out of the hole in my neck. Okay, I think you can understand me better this way. So next up, I'm going to put the tracheostomy tube back in and let you see how I talk with just the tracheostomy tube and no ventilator. So I need to go insert a tracheostomy tube. So I'll be right back. Here we go.
I need <clears throat> I need to go back on my ventilator for a moment for a moment. <clears throat> <clears throat> And even though I was only off my ventilator for a little bit, this is, ex <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> exactly why I don't, <coughs> <coughs> and even though I was only off my ventilator for a little bit. This is why I need to be on my ventilator. I get very, very short of breath. So I'm gonna finish up putting my trach tube ties on and just tell you, I did not explain that at all. Doing the tracheostomy tube exchange, I have other videos online which go into detail about how to do a tracheostomy tube exchange. Okay, so I have changed out my tracheostomy tube. And let me just tell you, every time I film, I always screw up doing my tracheostomy tube exchange. Now let me tell you, I do one tracheostomy tube exchange every month and I've done them for seven and a half years. And when I'm not filming, it's like, do, 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 whoop, ha, so easy. And when this camera is on, it everything goes wrong as you can imagine. This time I could not get my tracheostomy tube in. I don't know what was wrong, it just, would not go in and I had to use a ton of this lubricant jelly. So I apologize if you see lubricant jelly cascading down my neck, don't think it's any sort of goo or anything. I mean, it is goo, it's lubricant jelly, but it is nothing catastrophic and don't tell me, oh my goodness, you're gonna die, there's stuff, it's draining. No, it's just lubricant jelly, it is fine. The other thing I'm gonna quick tell you is, so when I did my tracheostomy tube exchange in the video, I actually had my operator and I'm trying to get it out of the box. So there's the box here and I'm trying to get it out and I went, Ooh, and it flew across the room. I've never had that happen ever. That was the only time and it flew across the room and I'm like, oh, oh no, oh no, it's oh, so tragic, so tragic. What am I gonna do? So I had to cut the film and I frantically found another clean operator. So I was like, we're just gonna pretend like, oh, look, I got it out of the box and it never, if this isn't the same, this is the same operator that was just in the box before. Yeah, you didn't see that fly across the room. <laughs> yeah, so onward. So let me continue to talk with the tracheostomy tube. So once you have the tracheostomy tube in place, let me demonstrate how having this hole in your airway is going to affect your ability to breathe. Let me just quick detour here. When you breathe regularly, you go in through your nose and mouth, down to your lungs and out through your nose and mouth. And speaking is pretty easy, but now you have this hole. This hole is going to make air go in and out of the tracheostomy tube, which means less air is going to go up through your nose and mouth, and it's gonna make speaking much more difficult. So let me demonstrate. So this is how I talk. With just the tracheostomy tube, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of energy, and it's very breezy. And it's very hard to be loud. So I'm gonna to try to scream. Ah! Doesn't work very loud. So with that being said, having nothing over the end of the tracheostomy tube makes speaking very, very difficult. But we are ingenious with making creations. You have a finger. So what can you do with a finger? It's called finger occlusion. Let me show you how it works. You go like this and it blocks off the end of your tracheostomy tube. So how does this work? Now air can go in through your tracheostomy tube. And then when you breathe out, it goes up through your nose and mouth. And when you do that, you can speak. La la la, that's so wonderful. I know it's fabulous, right? And so now you can actually scream and I won't scream because it'll screw up the audio. But there is a major disadvantage to this. So it's very hard to just be walking around all day you know, you have groceries in your hand and you're trying to get the door and you're like, honey, honey, I, I need you to get the door. But of course you got groceries in your hand. So, we're, so your finger slips off and you're like, honey, honey, I need you to get the door. And he can't hear you. Maybe that's good for him. Maybe it's good for you. Maybe it's not good for anybody. I don't know. But someone came up with an invention 
It's called a speaking valve. The speaking valve is kind of the same thing as a finger occlusion, a little bit different though. So inside here is a one-way valve. It allows air in through the tracheostomy tube, but then when you breathe out, there is a valve and it stops air from going out of your tracheostomy tube. This allows you to push air up through your nose and mouth and speak without your hands. It's hands-free speaking. Let me show you how this works. Here we go. So this is how you speak with a speaking valve. So this is this is wonderful because you do not need your finger. It's hands free. So you got your arms full of your groceries and you're like, honey, honey, get the door for me. Lovely, right? Yes, that is so lovely. So now you can be heard and you can use your hands. So it's a great invention. There is one caveat to this. This is only good for certain people because all the exhaled air has to go out through your nose and mouth. If you have very weak respiratory muscles like I do, using a speaking valve like this can make you very, very tired because everything has to go out through your nose and mouth. That takes a tremendous amount of energy. So you may not be able to do that because you may not have the muscle strength to do that. Also, you need to have a fully functional upper, upper airway. Some people have what's called stenosis, that's a narrowing of the airway. Some people completely have it occluded. There is no passageway for air up in the upper airway. If this is the case, this will not work for you because you will not be able to exhale enough. So this could potentially kill you if you have one of those conditions. So please, before running out and buying a speaking valve and you're like, now I can speak, talk to your medical provider because he or she will know if your speaking valve will work for you and will work for your situation. And even when you try speaking valves for the first time, always monitor your oxygen levels to make sure you are breathing properly, you are exhaling properly, and make sure this is a good fit for you. Don't just put it on and hope for the best. <laughs> so now we're done with the tracheostomy tube, let's move on to ventilators. So I have been talking with a ventilator and as you can see things are going well. So talking with a ventilator is a little bit different than talking with just a tracheostomy tube. First of all, the ventilator provides pressure. It gives me a pressure in, and when I, when I exhale, the pressure backs off, but the pressure does not go down to zero. It do, does not allow me to fully exhale. So even when I exhale, the, the ventilator is still providing a little bit of back pressure. So what I can do, I can use that back pressure through my tracheostomy tube, and then as it's going through the tracheostomy tube, I can push up as I'm exhaling to push air up through my vocal cords, and that is how I speak. It's a little bit technical, so you have to use that back pressure, use that back pressure, and then force everything up through your vocal cords to make speech. This can be very complicated and very complex, and a lot of people cannot master it. I have, why? Because I was never given, well, I shouldn't say that. I was given a speaking valve, but I wasn't told what it was or how to use it. And they're just like, go home. So I went home and figured out how to speak on my own and people go, wow, that is really amazing. You're not using a speaking valve and I am not, but a lot of people can't do this. They have not mastered it. So you can use a speaking valve in line. So let me show you how you do that. You need to have this adapter because you need to do some sort of adapt adaptation to this. I don't have the correct complete setup because like I said, I don't use this, but I'll just show you how you can connect it to your tracheostomy tube. So you can do this like this. I don't like doing this that much because <clears throat> I actually find it's very, very difficult to speak. <laughs> it just makes me very tired forcing all the air up. And then also you have to change the settings on your ventilator. Mine are not changed. And my ventilator is not getting the pressure of me exhale, ex exhaling. So it is giving me more and more pressure it is giving me a lot of pressure right now. So it's giving me a lot of pressure because it's like you're not you're not getting enough breath because it, it monitors my exhalation. If I'm not exhaling, if I'm not exhaling properly, it just gives me more and more breath. I gotta take this off because it's making me really sick. Okay, much better. So if you use this, you have to use adjust your ventilator um, settings. <laughs> Excuse me, because otherwise it's gonna give you more and more pressures and it's gonna be very uncomfortable. Whew, that was really uncomfortable. So I don't use this. I mean, if you want to, you can, but you're gonna need some sort of adapter. And this should come in this little kit if you have the passing mirror valve. It should come there with it, but make sure. Um, don't just try to use it because you're gonna need some sort of adapter. And it's really hard to use it if you don't have the adapter. So that is how you speak. So just quick demonstration. Let me 
demonstrate the different kinds of speaking. So first of all, this is, oh, sorry about that. <clears throat> this is just with the tracheostomy tube. This is finger occlusion. This is with the speaking valve. And this is with a ventilator. The only major difference is just speaking with the tracheostomy tube. This sounds really, really weird, very breathy. So that is how a tracheostomy tube affects speech. And of course, going all the way back to the beginning of the video, I showed you how you speak without, uh, without a tracheostomy tube in place. You just go up, up in through your nose and mouth, down through your lungs, and you just speak away and everything's dandy, hike, hunky dory, dandy something. I don't know, I'm getting tired. So words, Ooh, who needs them? <laughs> and then once you have the tracheostomy, you have that hole in your throat and air is gonna go in and out, out through your throat. It's gonna make things much more complex and complicated. <laughs> then you put the tracheostomy tube in and that's gonna make breathing a lot easier because this is a curved tracheostomy tube. It's gonna grab the air, pull it down into your lungs and when you exhale, it's gonna grab all the air and throw it out except it'll make speaking more difficult. So that's why we have finger occlusion. We have the speaking valve. And if you use a ventilator, you can just learn to use a ventilator, just speak on your own, or you can have the lovely speaking valve with the ventilator. So that was my grand video. I hope you enjoyed it because it was so much fun. Oh, nothing like changing my tracheostomy tube. I'm filming ethically failing. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. Please also remember to share and comment. It really helps my video. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.